Hey everybody, today I'm going to be giving a small explanation as to why tinnitus appears, persists, um, about potassium channel openers, their functionality, um, what it has to do with tinnitus, and also the uh, studies of Thanos Xenopolis on these potassium channels, and also the drugs that are being developed by Xenon Pharmaceuticals and Biohaven for the specific KCNQ2-3 potassium channels responsible for tinnitus. Now, Dr. Thanos Sinopoulos' key investigations into the mechanisms of tinnitus have placed a spotlight on the critically important, as I've mentioned before, KCNQ2 and KCNQ3 potassium channels, also called KV7.2 and KV7.3 channels. Um, his research, which has only used animal models, um, has studied the precise role of these channels and what role they play in the context of tinnitus. In the auditory neurons, these KCNQ channels contribute to what is known as the M current. It's an inhibitory current that acts as a cellular break, preventing the neuron from becoming too excitable. When sound waves enter the ear and ultimately reach the brain through the auditory pathway, through the dorsal cochlear nucleus and other elements of the pathway, um, they should not make these neurons hyperactive unless something in the quote-unquote breaking system uh, goes wrong. Now, Tinopoulos' animal studies have shown that when neural injury occurs, like from loud noise exposure after a concert, um, there's a temporary reduction in KCNQ23 channel activity. This disruption can lead to the neurons becoming pathologically active, hence the quote-unquote temporary ringing in the ears, or transient tinnitus that some people experience after these types of events. For most, after this potassium channel resurgence, um, where the channel's normal function returns, the ringing subsides. However, for some, like us, the resurgence doesn't happen, leading to continued neuronal hyperexcitability and chronic tinnitus. In other words, the auditory neurons keep firing without proper regulation, which is actually also described in Susan Shore's research on the dorsal cochlear nucleus, specifically the fusiform cells. And this uh, produces the persistent perception of sound when none exists externally. Now, the big question in the research is, of course, what causes some people's channels to recover and others not? Um, unfortunately, this is a mystery. Nobody knows why. Some people have it, some people don't. Um, genetic factors could be at play, uh, but we don't really know at the moment why people, uh, some people's channels do not resurge like most. Now, I'm sure many of you are wondering, uh, what about hyperacusis? What about noxacusis, also known as pain hyperacusis? Well, as I've mentioned in my previous videos, the dorsal cochlear nucleus, or the DCN, uh, which is one of the first auditory centers of the brain, um, doesn't only receive signals from the cochlea, yeah, aka from, you know, the hair cells and the noise, um, but also from other sensory systems. And there has been some research that shows the type 2 fibers, which um, constitute a small percentage of the auditory nerve fibers overall, um, they in which they innervate the outer hair cells and other uh, areas of the auditory pathway. Um, they suggest that they are activated excessively uh, during the dorsal cochlear nucleus um, hyperactivity, which is prevalent in tinnitus. Uh, so this, uh, you know, this entire thing, like the dorsal cochlear nucleus hyperactivity of the fusiform cells, etc., 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 and the potassium channels being uh, fucked up, so to speak, uh, could potentially be uh, one of the contributing factors towards noxacusis, specifically. Now, while the role of potassium channels uh, is less direct in these conditions specifically, um, the overall theme of neuronal excitability bridges the KCNQ channel-focused research of both Thanos Dinopolis and uh, the integration studies, the, sorry, the multi-sensory integration studies um, at the dorsal cochlear nucleus by Susan Shore. And uh, both of these, uh, both of their research um, support the idea that a disruption in the normal activity of the auditory neurons through different mechanisms can lead to 
to tinnitus and hyperacusis. Now, if we address hyperexcitability through pharmacological KCNQ channel openers, such as the one by Zenon Pharmaceuticals, Zen 1101, and the one by Biohaven, uh, which is also known as BPV 7000, which are both being uh, researched right now and which are in their clinical trials. Um, I believe that both of these things do have a massive potential to treat uh, not only tinnitus, but also hyperacusis and noxacusis, if we're talking specifically about uh, medications. Um, it's really difficult to say here exactly if it's going to help because the research done by Thanos Dizopoulos was only on quote-unquote fresh cases, as you can see on the uh, chart above. Um, but I do believe that these medications do have massive potential to help. Um, but unfortunately, there's not really anything we can do um, except just, you know, wait and see what happens, basically. So, yeah. If any of you are interested in hearing more about uh, how these uh, potassium channels work and uh, also their link to tinnitus, um, and not to mention anything about the dorsal cochlear nucleus, you can certainly send me a message in Telegram, uh, which I will link in the description. Um, or you may also leave a comment below, and I'll do my best to try to answer them.